Good morning. Uh, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia. Um, and I'm going to talk today about what I plan to plant for fall. I am in zone 7B in Virginia. Um, it is very rainy today. And so I had hoped to do this video outside in the garden where it's beautiful. Well, where it should be beautiful with sun, but it's raining. So I am inside. Um, so basically, oh, <laughs> my props of my beautiful vegetables I've gotten this week. Um, the tomatoes have been splitting because we have been getting a lot of rain in the last few days. Well, shoot, the last few weeks, really. Um, and so I have been picking them a little bit early and I'm going to let them um, ripen in the house. And my goodness, pay no attention to my horrible nails. I'm going to get them done today or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been picking them and bringing them in to let them ripen. I'm going to make spaghetti sauce tonight. Um, well, I'm going to make spaghetti tonight and I have ragu sauce and I'm going to mix in some fresh tomatoes some fresh, uh, peppers and see if I can like spruce it up a little bit, but I also plan to make my own tomato sauce later. Anyway, it's not why we're here. We're here to talk about fall um, gardening. And so in zone 7B, I can actually grow all year long. Um, and so when I say fall gardening, I'm going to plant in late summer. So I'll be planting my vegetables um, by the end of August in most cases. My garlic and my onions I'll put in later. Um, and my shallots, things like that, they'll go in later. But there are vegetables that are considered cold hardy and frost tolerant. I hope I have that right and not cold tolerant, frost hardy. I think I had it right the first time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there are a bunch of vegetables that are considered that, which means they like colder temperatures, they thrive in colder temperatures, and some even taste better um, after they've had a frost. Um, that is not your tomatoes, that is not your peppers or your cucumbers. Those are all summer vegetables. Um, and so I know that it's summer is kind of dwindling down um, for most of us, although we don't get our first frost here until uh, sometime in November. But you wanna have your fall vegetables or your vegetables that you are going to overwinter, you wanna have those in the ground by late summer. Um, in your area. So what you should do if you're not sure of your last frost date, you can just Google it. Um, I normally use the Old Farmer, Farmer's Almanac uh, website, um, but any website really, if you Google it, is gonna tell you when your last frost date is. Um, and you probably should do it to your closest city and sometimes it'll let you put your zip code in. So however you do it, you're going to want to find out when your last frost is because you want to get your vegetables in the ground um, so that they can build a root system, um, you know, within, you know, six to eight weeks before your last frost. Um, in our area, there are lots of pests in late summer. So it's my coffee in late summer. So um, I do cover. I use... Um, shade cloth or um like tool from the fabric store <laughs> sorry sorry um just to cover it um because the uh, white cabbage moth things like that can get to your vegetables and basically eat them up although last year i had vegetables that it seemed like the cabbage white moth had eaten um but i guess they didn't eat the middle leaf and so it just started growing again so I don't really um, recommend like just straight pulling your stuff until you're sure it's dead or, or not gonna grow back um, because sometimes they grow back. So let's get started. First, I have a planner. My planner um, that um, the apostle from the church that I grew up in gave me and I love this little planner. Uh, it's not a planner, it's a notebook, um, but I love it. It says, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. So I like that. Anyway, I use this to keep track. Uh, last year, I used my phone 
if you have an iPhone, you know that, you know, once you have so much stuff in there, things are going to stop saving. There is, you know, you're going to have to delete stuff. And so I chose not to use the iPhone for this year. Um, and so I don't have my notes from last year, although last year was definitely just me trying things. I, um, it was my first time doing a fall garden. Um, I actually planted things out in January last year and by early spring, I was having harvest of like uh, kohlrabi and um, broccoli rob, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I think it's a great idea to keep a planner, a great idea to um, be able to look back on something. Like, you know, if, if, if you don't remember when you planted and things like that, I think it's a great idea to have a planner. So I do have a planner and I use it for, excuse me, to keep up with things, even for the summer garden. Um, so let's talk about what I plan to plant. So I have my root vegetable container. I have my cold hardy leafy container. And then just my cold hardy and my beans and peas. Um, so one of the things I plan to do this year is I, I have... I have two beds that aren't thriving. They didn't thrive much in the summer, um, but I could grow beans in them. <laughs> so I plan to put a cover crop. I got this from our local nursery a little ways away from me, um, but it's as local as it's gonna get for me. Um, and so it's a crop, cover crop, and it's a soil builder of peas and oats. So I'm gonna try that in those two beds. Um, so what am I growing this year? In, way, in the way of like cold hardy brassicas, I am growing cauliflower. This is a variety that matures in like 70 days. Um, I think I used it last year and it took way longer than 70 days. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to grow a few uh, varieties of cauliflower. And so I have the early snowball yellow. I have the um, Bishop F1, that's from Johnny C's, uh, hybrid white cauliflower. Um, and then I have a cauliflower, the net. <laughs> um, I have another cauliflower that I actually got from the dollar store um, and it's a Snowball X. So I have a Snowball Y and a Snowball X and they're both supposed to be early. Um, and then I'm going to do broccoli and I have a few different varieties of this as well. And so the way that I have decided I'm going to plant this year is I'm doing several varieties of the same thing. And then that way I can have a continuous harvest. Uh, you can get a continuous harvest by succession sowing too. I just don't want to sow seeds for the next three months. I just don't. So I'm not going to do that. Um, so if you get varieties that have different maturity dates, then you can kind of um, achieve the same thing. And then in my mind, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, achieve the same thing and you only have one seed sowing starting time and one planting time. And so that's my plan. So my broccoli varieties are... I think I got my stuff mixed up. There's a calabrese somewhere too. Mm. <laughs> Maybe should have planned a little better for this video. Anywho, green goliath. Um, and that matures, I think, in 55 days. So that should be a quick, like before fall ends, I should have some green goliath. Um, and then I have a green magic that matures in 57 days. And I grew this last year and I really did like it. Um, and it matured really fast. I purchased starts from the local, local feed and seed store, not the one a little further away. Um, and so this year I was like, I'm just going to get those seeds and start them myself. Um, because I also want like quite a few plants. We eat a lot of broccoli here. My son is a very uh, picky eater. And so broccoli is one of the things he will eat. And then, like I said, there's a Calabrese broccoli. No, I know what happened to my Calabrese broccoli. I didn't realize that I left it outside and then it rained and the rain got on my back porch somehow, which is covered. Um, and so the broccoli was on the table and 
the it's in a it was in a paper content a paper package. Uh, so you know what happened. I lost the calories. Um, it was from last year, and our local local feed and seed store sells seeds really cheap, so I can just go get some more. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is broccoli rob, which I grew, I put out in January, and it was delicious um, and ready pretty early in the spring. So um, that may be another thing that I do this year. Although I didn't. I didn't uh, enjoy planting seeds in January, so I may and I may not. I did like the early harvest, though. So we shall see. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to grow is cabbage, and I really, really love cabbage. My cabbage didn't do as well as I had hoped. Oh, I'm sorry. That's another broccoli I'm going to do. Uh, Waltham 29. And I believe that one, if I remember from looking it up, it has a really long maturity time. So I have four cabbage varieties that I'm going to grow. Uh, Flat Dutch, that's from my local, local feed and seed store. That had a very long maturity time. I don't even think I successfully grew them um, because it just took forever and it was time to actually put in summer vegetables. So what ifs? Um, I have an early golden acres and that is from the uh, Dollar Tree. So I got this pack of seeds for 25 cents. Um, this is a 60 to 65 day maturity. Um, I'm going to do a hybrid fresh market green cabbage. This is from Johnny Seeds. It's a 71 day maturity. And then I'm going to do an early Jersey Wakefield. This is from MI Gardener. And this has a 90 to 110 day maturity. They're really cute. I grew them last year too. And I actually grew them in a pot. I'm not growing anything in pots this year because I don't want to have to cover those pots or bring them in my house. So if it's not going in a bed that could be covered um, at one time, it's not going to get planted. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do Brussels. Sprouts. It's funny because I thought it was Brussels sprout. It's Brussels sprouts. So uh, you learn something new every day. These are both from Baker Creek. Um, and they have, I don't know, they don't always put their maturity days on the back of their packages. So I'm sure I Googled it to find out. But anyway, I'm doing a Groninger. Groninger? I'm probably saying that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing a Long Island Improved. Um, so I like Brussels sprouts. I like to make this Brussels sprout hash that I found, like a recipe I found on Google. It is delicious. It's like Brussels sprouts. I think there was peppers in it, bacon. It's delicious. So I'm going to grow some Brussels sprouts. Um, kohlrabi. Delicious, delicious, delicious. First time trying it last year. And I really loved it. I made like a faux french fries with it. it. It looked like french fries. It definitely didn't taste like french fries. Tastes more like a cabbage broccoli mix, but it was delicious. Um, so I'm going to try some other things and some new things with this this year. But um, I got some free early purple Vienna um, when I ordered from Baker Creek. I'm going to do a delicacy. That's what we're going to call it. White. And that's from Seeds Now and a Vienna, a white Vienna. Um, and I'm not really sure exactly if you can um, preserve kohlrabi or not, but we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna see what we can do. <laughs> All right, so those are my cold hardy, uh, like brassica plants that I'm gonna do. Somewhere along the line, I left, well, some seeds fell out. So what I'm going to do with those so that they don't go bad is I'm going to do uh, microgreens at some point. <laughs> I, I don't know when, but I'm going to say at some point. I'm going to do microgreens. So let's keep it moving. There's three variety of peas that I'm growing. And some are falling out. I don't know where they came from. Any Oh, this package is busted. Anyway. So this is a 65 to 70 day to harvest. It's a green arrow bush. And so that's kind of cool because it doesn't need to, to anything to run up. Um, so it can be covered and I could probably grow peas well into the winter with a bush variety. 
um, as long as they're covered. And then I have a Waxton Progress 9. I've never grown this, so it's new in my gardener. He had a sale and I was like, oh, I need peas. Let's go over there and see what he has. Um, and then a Lincoln pea. And I don't know what that tastes like either because I have never grown it. And that goes here. Um, so yeah, I, so peas from the garden. Oh my God, deliciously sweet. Like really, really sweet. Um, and I'm not really a pea eater. My son is, but now I have become one because they are delicious. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the root vegetables. Root vegetables. I'm going to do some bunching onions, but I'm going to let them grow. And then I'm going to put them in and let them um, bulb up. So that's going to take some time, but that's what I'm planning to do. I'll maybe do a video on it, try to take you along for what I'm doing with that. Um, leeks. I've never tasted leeks in my entire life, but I watch YouTube videos and they just look so cool. I imagine they taste like onions. I'm not really sure what they taste like. So I'm going to try them though. They are a 75 day maturity. So I'm going to do that. going to try those. Um, carrots. I have a few varieties of carrots, I think. Or maybe I don't. I've been trying carrots for since last year and I even planted them in spring. And there's a few that's out there that's still growing, but carrots are like my nemesis. So anywho, we just have some regular orange carrots at this point. I've had several types of carrots that I did not successfully grow. <laughs> but I'm also trying not to buy any more seeds because I have way more seeds than I'm ever probably gonna need. Next root vegetable is turnip. I love turnips. Uh, not too long ago, I was diagnosed pre-diabetic. Um, and so I'm trying to eat more vegetables. Um, and so turnips came kind of, I tried to make them take the place of potatoes because I love potatoes. Turnips can't take the place of potatoes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It, it, they were okay, but they're not potatoes. All right, beets. I do not eat the actual beet root, but I do like the greens. So I'm going to do cylindrum. I hope I'm saying that right. I may not be. I'm going to do a Detroit dark red and a bull's, no, yeah, bull's blood beet. I do a lot of seed swaps. So when you see me um, showing packages that look different, it's because I did a seed swap. Um, there's a lot of them on Instagram that I take part in. Uh, I'm gonna do rutabaga. That also came from a seed swap. So I'm gonna try rutabaga because that's another thing that could take the place of potato, but it is not gonna take the place of potato for me. I'll just eat less potato. I, I love potatoes, they're delicious. Um, and then radishes, have a few different kinds. These are from the Dollar Tree. Um, and then I have a few. Um, so early scarlet, French breakfast, and then a gourmet blend. And then I have a few that I did like seed swap, in a sweet seed swap. This is a watermelon radish um, variety. So those are the root vegetables I'm gonna be doing. I'm hoping to plant very um, tight and close as a way to get a larger harvest. Um, summertime, I did not do that, um, but I'm gonna look closer into making sure I do that next year too. Uh, because I had a decent harvest, a good harvest, but if you see my garden right now, it's um, very bare looking when I could have been succession planting um, to get something in the ground as things were coming out. So I'm gonna look into that next year. So last but not least are, is the cold hardy leafy vegetables. And I am not a healthy eater. I never have been. I'm not gonna say I'm not, I wasn't because I'm doing way better now. Um, and so leafy vegetables, I would have never even thought like, let's try that. Like I don't, wouldn't have bought them from the store and stuff. Also wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been diagnosed pre-diabetic. Um, <laughs> so anyway, let's talk about those. Uh, we start with lettuce, um, black seeded Simpson, 
and a gourmet green mixture. Those are the lettuces that I'm going to do. Um, I am not really sure when I'm gonna put the lettuce in. I didn't have luck with lettuce last year. The aphids ate them. I think it was aphids. Um, it just was a really a struggle to plant lettuce, uh, well, to, to get lettuce last year. So I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I do want lettuce so we can have some fresh salads. Um, the other thing is bok choy. Uh, I think I have two varieties, but I'm not sure. This is from the local, local feed and seed store. Um, and they don't say what kind it is. Maybe there isn't a kind of bok choy. <laughs> so maybe when I say a kind, I mean where I got it from. I, I don't know, y'all. Um, so the other thing I'm going to do is switch chart. And I do have a yellow and just a rainbow. And this, I think, is just the rainbow. And then there's a yellow variety that I have too. Oh my goodness, I have so many kale. That's the yellow. That's from Seeds Now. Um, and I have so many kale varieties because I fell in love with kale um, over the last few months. All right, so kale. I have a curly kale from the local local feed and seed store. Did really good last year because that's the only kale I had last year. Um, I picked up some dinosaur kale. I just see everyone growing it and it looks like it's cool. I hope it tastes delicious. Um, the dwarf blue curled also looks really cool. Hope it tastes delicious. The Casper kale, Baker Creek, um, Vates. I had Vates collards and they were a very good quality. So I figured I'd try Vates kale. And then I got a free seed of Red Russian or uh, Ragged Jack. So all of my kale. Uh, I did a seed swap and I've never had leaf broccoli. Um, and so I just imagine, you know, since broccoli leaves are edible, I imagine that's a plant that doesn't head and it just gives you the leaves. So I'm gonna try that. Uh, collards, collards. I'm doing three varieties of collards. I'm doing a Georgia Southern. The Georgia Southern I did last year, and I think they were a thicker, um, a thicker leaf. I did not eat them because last year I said, I don't eat collars. And I didn't even try them. But then I did something. Oh, when I found out I was pre-diabetic and actually started working on it, I tried some from the grocery store and they were good. So my family eats these a lot and that's why I grew them last year. So I need a lot of collards. I need enough for me and enough to share with them. <laughs> and collards are cold hardy and frost tolerant. Yes. Um, and so they don't even have to be under a cover really in, in, in my zone. Um, Morris Heading, which I think Morris Heading is the North Carolina ones, I think. Because um, you know they have different variety names. And then Vates, those are the ones I grew last year. And they were delicious. And actually, I grew all of these last year now that I think about it. I take that back. Um, my local, local feed and seed store had starts. Um, and then last but not least is the spinach. So I'm doing a Bloomsdale and a Matador Viking. Oh, uh, so I started my seeds at the end of July. Um, they are downstairs in my laundry room under grow lights because I did try putting them outside um, and I started losing seedlings left and right because it was so hot. I, when I say outside, I put them in my uh, little makeshift greenhouse, I guess, it, you know, the little... The greenhouses you can get off of uh, Amazon and stuff. So it's not like a permanent greenhouse. You can move it and things. Anyway, so I started losing seeds. So I brought them in the house and put them under the grow lights, which mine aren't like grow lights. They're actually uh, shop lights with a uh, high lumen bulb in them, all from Walmart. Uh, so it's cheap unless you start buying a bunch. And I bought a bunch <laughs> because in the summer, I um, started way more seeds than I needed, which all of the shelves were full. I have two shelves now and they're not actually full because I learned that just because a seed germinates, it doesn't mean you have to keep it. <laughs> anyway, 
Thank you for watching. I know this is long. Um, if you hung in there with me for over 25 minutes, um, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like um, if you like the video. If you dislike it, you can do that too, but I hope you don't. <laughs> all right. Have a good day, um, and I will see you all next weekend. Bye.